was in 2019 in the innovation office at Karolinska Institute in Sweden. Our team was discussing setting up a company around the technology that we had developed that would eventually open new doors for personalized medicine. When we walked out of the office, my supervisor asked me, would you like to set up the data analysis team in Armenia? I wanted to say yes, but the expertise we needed was not pure data science. We needed bioinformaticians, people with deep domain knowledge in biology as well as in data and computer science. We didn't have the expertise in Armenia and finding people from abroad was not a solution either. Bioinformatics is one of the most needed and hard to find competences of the 21st century and recruiting people from abroad requires a genius. So, did I say no? I didn't. I said, why not? I said it in a way that my supervisor thought that I was agreeing with him in my strange Armenian non-expressive manner, but I was in fact just asking a question to myself. Why do we always miss out on opportunities to join the global race of innovation in personalized medicine, genetic engineering, and related biotech developments? And how did I end up in one of the best hotspots for genomics research? I was in the third year of university studies in Armenia when I met my PhD supervisor-to-be, sitting here in the audience, an experimentalist who was tired of pipetting in the lab and wanted to switch to bioinformatics, a profession that saves you from the lab routines, but then makes you stick to your laptop for 24 hours a day. So he opened a bioinformatics group in the Institute of Molecular Biology, the first one in the country to focus on human genomics, and that's where the journey started. However, it was not until I read an interesting paper that I realized the power of bioinformatics. The paper was about telomeres, the biological clocks of our cells. I was interested how they contribute to aging and cancer development. And I even had an idea of how to study that. I approached my supervisor, afraid that we might not have the resources to do so. And to my surprise, he thought for a while and said, why don't we download the data from the web and analyze it for this purpose? To me, it was a game changer. It meant that with the plenty of data on the web, one can study almost anything. We were among the first ones to leverage genomics data to study the role of telomeres in cancer and in aging. And finally, we were ready to publish. It appeared that we were not the only ones. A group at Sanjur Institute near Cambridge just published a paper with the same title that we were going to. Although a disheartening experience in the beginning, it actually gave me a sense of inclusion. Being in the same game, with other leading institutions, equipped with the same tools as them, computers and imagination, all while sitting in your home country was a dream come true. We eventually published as well and continued our research on human genomics. Also finding great collaborators, traveling a lot and having fun. I did my PhD on the same topic, also co-supervised by another great collaborator from the University of Leipzig in Germany and eventually obtained a Marie Curie Fellowship to conduct postdoctoral studies in Sweden. And now, walking in the streets of Stockholm, I was thinking, if all of this was possible for me, why would that not be the case for others? My supervisors had opened up the opportunities for me and that had changed my career path. Over the years, a few more students in Armenia had also benefited from that. But the pace of growth was simply not enough. I wanted to expand our activities and engage many more students and show them the enormous opportunities that a career in bioinformatics brings. And this was not just about creating opportunities in vacuum. This was a long-term vision to meet the future market needs that are already knocking on our doors and will be knocking even harder tomorrow. So, this is what I was determined to do when I packed my bags five months ago and returned back to Armenia. 
I was not alone. My colleagues in Armenia and abroad and many community experts had joined the call. And shortly after, the Armenian Bioinformatics Institute was officially established as a non-profit scientific educational foundation. Our mission, our mission was simple. Create the human capital that would eventually drive developments in the genomics-heavy biotech sector. But where do we start? Should we start from the universities? Well, uh, we've learned the hard way that in a country with no relevant marketplace to drive student admissions, establishment of a separate educational program is simply not feasible. Should we start from the industry first? The answer, as you guess, is again, it's not feasible. Why? Because as you heard in the introduction, the number of genome bioinformatics experts with a PhD degree in Armenia is pretty funny. It's just two, including myself, if you are wondering. What is possible to achieve with this number? Two was the number of individuals from each species that Noah had put in his ark. Sustaining a species with just two individuals is maybe possible, heavily dependent on chance, but nevertheless possible. But believe me when I tell this, bioinformatics is a bit harder than just reproduction. And even if it's possible to do research, Sustaining an industrial ecosystem with just two people is simply not serious. So, should we start from research then? That's where we have started, but that is not enough. I imagine you're already drawing this vicious cycle of education science industry axis in your heads. If you're getting dizzy, try <laughs> looking at one spot, I can stand still. <laughs> this is a complex problem requiring a complex solution. So you won't hear easy recipes today. Focus on basic science with simultaneous gradual impact on education and industry became our strategy. To implement this strategy, we are creating a culture of communication. Communication between students and researchers, between Armenia and abroad, between biologists and data scientists, between academia and industry, between res research entities in Armenia. This is because researchers are driven by the scientific environment. Infrastructural and financial resources are needed, but the scientific environment is crucial because innovation happens in the corridors when two different minds meet and talk. And this is what we are trying to achieve with our weekly meetups of various formats, including students, researchers, and industry experts from Armenia and from abroad. Next, uh, we are bridging knowledge gaps with non-formal educational activities. Our Big Bang Summer School this year has attracted the best students to the field by providing a rich content in bioinformatics due to the hard work of two mentors and participation of 36 speakers from 11 countries. We are proud to tell that we have retention of more than half of the students after the school is over, which is a great motivator to us. We are engaging the students into research projects, supervised locally or remotely from abroad. Imagine a data science bachelor student getting involved into research in the cutting edge field of genetic engineering, supervised remotely from Harvard University. Imagine a medical science resident discovering for himself that he's not limited to the lack of lab resources in Armenia, switching to the field of bioinformatics over the summer and engaging into neuroscience research from the KU Leuven Institute in Belgium. Imagine a medical science graduate finally realizing his dream of conducting aging research in Armenia, supervised by a top bioinformatician from the University of Leipzig in Germany. All of this is happening today. But these are just the first steps. The fun parts are there, but the serious achievements are still ahead of us. And it will require long years of hard work until the results of our activities are finally visible. However, we, the enthusiasm that see we see among the students who join us 
And the support that we get from our colleagues from abroad gives us confidence that we are on the right path. And soon the day will come that Armenia-based biotech companies will have no problem in hiring genome bioinformatics experts educated in Armenia. And this is not only about our country. Similar challenges exist in Romania, Serbia, Poland, Chile, and many other places. And I hope that all of these countries will succeed in their efforts of creating the much-needed expertise in genomics and bioinformatics today for the good of humankind. Thank you.